Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Magdalena, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Strathclyde in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. And today I will um, show you a presentation uh, which is about using aptomers actually in agriculture to detect antibiotics such as um, ampicillin. And I'll be making a comparison between two methods that I've, um, um, I've tried um, between <clears throat> Um, using internal redox um, reporter and an external um, redox couple. Um, so just uh, the objectives of my presentation. So first I'll cover the aim and the background of my um, PhD project. I'll move on to the target um, and the optimal specifications. Um, I'll then show the, the two methods and how they compare to each other. Um, and uh, show you some results from both uh, methods. Um, and then I'll show you some um, attempt to, to do analysis um, in real sample, which is milk in my case. Um, and finally, I'll just cover the next steps I aim to take in my project. Um, so first of all, um, the aim of my um, PhD project is to detect antibiotic residues in milk. Why milk? Um, it is well documented that um, uh, when dairy cows are treated for certain infection with antibiotics, some of the residues are secreted in milk. They don't go away simply by uh, all the other um, uh, routes. Um, and um, there is a certain period of time uh, when cows are being treated with antibiotics, which is called withdrawal drug period, um, which can be from a few hours to uh, a few days when milk from these cows is taken separately and is not introduced in the mainstream. However, when these cows are already deemed healthy, um, their milk is reintroduced to the mainstream uh, and is collected with the bulk. Um, therefore, in many territories, such as the UK, um, there are certain um, requirements um, and uh, there are certain tests that are done each day on the farm to um, test milk for um, antibiotic residues. And they are uh, maximum residue limits, uh, MRLs, uh, set values, um, um, uh, and when um, milk is found to be contaminated with uh, residues more than those um, uh, maximum residue limits, unfortunately, there is a practice of the milk just being sprayed over the land um, of the farm, um, which uh, on its side causes, uh, accumulates, or even spreads further antimicrobial resistance. I haven't heard many talks actually uh, about antimicrobial resistance, but it is a problem, it is there. And this is just a tiny part of the bigger picture, um, but it, it, there is a real requirement for um, controlling that um, in a way. So real-time detection for residues is required because the, cur the current methods that are used um, on, on dairy farms are, are very time consuming and also very expensive. So. Um, a way to um, detect um, antibiotic residues better is by electrochemical biosensors. Um, moving on to the target, um, even though uh, penicillins or beta-lactam uh, classes, uh, class uh, drugs um, are the, basically the first um, antibiotics that have been uh, developed, um, they are still very widely used in veterinary medicine. And you can see in this graph here that um, um, beta-lactams are actually still the leading choice in veterinary medicine. This is just a recent report from um, uh, taken from UK uh, data um, report. Um, and uh, other uh, antibiotic residues that are used um, on vet in veterinary medicine on dairy cows are tetracyclines, aminoglycosides, macrolides, and others. Um, ampicillin is a classic beta-lactam uh, drug. It contains a beta-lactam ring. Um, it is active against gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And we do have a collaborator in dairy um, industry that uh, say that ampicillin and tamoxicillin are the most used um, antibiotics currently in Scotland, um, uh, where I'm uh, currently located. Uh, ampicillin is excreted unchanged or in the form of penicilloic um, acid metabolites. The maximum residue limits I was talking earlier, um, the threshold set for milk is four micrograms per liter or around 11 nanomolar. Um, and ampicillin is negatively charged in pH 7.6. Um, 
I have chosen Optimer for my bar recognition, uh, bar recognition uh, element. And uh, this is a structure, um, this is a sequence that I've employed from uh, the literature. I think someone mentioned yesterday um, the same paper, um, and I think they've taken uh, one of the Optimers from that paper that were developed a few years ago, but I've uh, taken um, one of the other two uh, choices from, from that paper. And it's a very nice, short 19 base uh, sequence. Um, when we were request, when we were purchasing um, the optimer um, to be synthesized, I requested a tile to be attached on the fifth prime because we're using goat electrodes and tile has a very high affinity towards goat. Um, and according to the literature paper, um, these are the interaction sites uh, on the optimer um, that interact with the target ampicillin through hydrogen bonding and pi pi stacking. So. As I mentioned, um, I'll be showing you two methods. So this is the uh, optimer just with the tile um, attached to the fifth prime that I was using for my uh, method one. And the way I was tracking um, the, um, the performance of the optimer and the performance of the bar sensor was using external redox reporter. However, I ordered the second batch of that same optimer, but with the methylene blue tag on the third prime. Um, and I wanted to compare um, uh, both how they behave, since metal in blue is very traceable in uh, different solutions. So um, when ampicillin is introduced to um, the, the surface, uh, which already contains Aptomar, um, they should bind. And then uh, classic signal on approach, the metal in blue um, tag should, uh, so the Aptomar should fold in a way that the metal in blue tag comes closer to the gold surface. Um, and um, electrochemically that can be measured with the current uh, increase. So moving on to the methods. Um, so this is just a schematic of what I've been using for both methods, but there are some differences. Uh, so first we start with the uh, goat bare, uh, bare goat surface. And this is the chip. I don't know if you can see very well, but this is the chip that we are uh, currently using. So we have eight working electrodes that share a common counter and a common um, reference electrode. Um, we then move on to electrodeposition of gold nanostructures. I wouldn't say particles because when I had a look under SEM, they don't really look round. They're more like um, flower-like structures on the electrode. Uh, and we do that using chrono amperometry. Um, then we um, incubate the electrodes um, with uh, the modified uh, aptomer, uh, which is pre-reduced. Um, and we do that just for uh, one hour. And the working concentration of Daptomer is one micromolar. Um, we then um, have a wash step and we backfill the uh, remaining active, active sites on the electrode with uh, MCH. So um, as I said, there are some differences. So the main differences is that my method one uh, uses ferrocyanide redox couple, very well known in literature, uh, to track the performance of the biosensor. And the internal redox uh, tag, as I said, is the methylene blue label uh, directly on the optimer. Um, for the backfill, uh, for the backfilling agent, um, in method one, um, the concentration after um, a few steps of optimization, the concentration, the optimal concentration of MCH um, is actually equal to the concentration of the optimer, which is one micromolar. And um, if I was putting more than that, for example, if I was um, backfilling with two millimolar, that seems to be interfering with the optimer in, in, in a way. Um, so the optimal concentration is uh, one micromole and for the internal redox stack, two millimole, as the literature suggests, uh, um, works um, fine. Um, the other main difference between the two methods is that the internal redox tag um, is a direct measurement in the sample. So after my uh, electrodes are um, modified, I just put the sample on top of the, the surface and I can take direct measurement within just a few seconds of equilibration. Whereas for the external redox reporter, there is an incubation time of 30 minutes uh, followed by a wash step and then adding the ferrocyanide uh, to take the measurement. 
And final difference, um, the external uh, redox reporter um, method um, um, uses impedance measurements. So I was measuring the resistance on the electrodes and the internal redox tag, I was tracking the uh, metal in blue tag um, with um, a square wave um, voltammetry and just um, measuring the current. So um, the first method, um, as you can see from the title, it has been unsuccessful. Um, on the left hand side, we can see a nice graph uh, showing the clear difference between positive and negative controls. So in the negative controls, I didn't have any ampicillin. And in the um, uh, positive controls, I did have some um, ampicillin. And we can see that the um, resistance on the surface of the electrode um, was increasing the more ampicillin I was adding. However, um, the, these results I managed to uh, actually do just one. So this is representation of one chip uh, and eight electrodes. Um, unfortunately, um, the long incubation times with the sample that I mentioned, the 30 minutes uh, incubation uh, time, uh, actually beats the purpose of having a real time um, sensor for detection of antibiotics. Also, um, ferroferrocyanide um, has been recently reported in the literature to be etching the gold surface. So mm -hmm. essentially with each measurement, I was compromising the detection system um, with the actual redox uh, uh, couple. And finally, inconsistent results. So in here, um, you can see uh, my other attempts on, on uh, many other chips that I was uh, using with this method. And you can see my positive and my negative controls just being all over the place and overlapping. So I just couldn't get anywhere with that uh, method further than, uh, further than this. But um, I did see some potential in that optimer, and that is why I decided to um, order another batch with the method in blue tag um, on the third prime. So here uh, we can see um, with the, the working method, um, again, similar graph, uh, but here we are measuring current instead of resistance. And again, we can see a nice difference between um, the positive and the negative controls. Um, and the current uh, just increases uh, in the presence of the, um, um, the target um, exhibiting signal on approach. Um, here, my other attempts, um, you can see uh, the clear difference and the clear trend uh, between the positive and the negative controls. And uh, also, um, my next step with this method was to test the sensitivity, the selectivity of um, um, the optimer. So I did try some other um, antibiotic targets, such as penicillin G, which is also from the same antibiotic class, uh, chloramphenicol and oxytetracycline. And these are all measurements at one millimolar of the, um, the residues, so quite high. And there was still no response um, compared to uh, ampicillin. So before moving on to milk samples, um, I just want to give a quick background of the matrix because it is a very complex matrix. Even though uh, milk is predominantly made of water, it also consists of hydro uh, carbohydrates, uh, proteins, lipids, and minerals. Um, for example, proteins are quite big molecules. Um, and they often interfere with electrochemical signal. Um, if this is the size of a casein protein, for example, which is in milk, this is the size of my optimer. So you can see how much bigger that is. And usually in lab conditions, um, proteins are removed by a few steps, um, precipitation, centrifusion, uh, dilution, filtration, and finally um, adjusting the pH back to, back to neutral. Um, and as I said, um, if, if the purpose of my band sensor is to detect um, in real time, this is ve not very sufficient to be used uh, on the field. So I cannot really ask um, the farmers to do all of these steps before they can just measure just a small sample really. Um, so is it actually possible? So this is where I got uh, with my um, experiments before I came here in Oxford. Um, so in this graph, you can see uh, the measurements, uh, the metal in blue signal that was detected uh, in milk compared to buffer. So I actually can see a slight increase in the absolute current signal in milk. Um, that might be due to presence of more magnesium ions in milk, uh, maybe helping the, um, the optimer in a way. Um, 
so I do see a signal. However, when I attempted to add uh, ampicillin to my milk, uh, to, to the milk, um, I could see at the beginning this, uh, again, signal on approach uh, when I added the first concentrations with a concentration which was 100 nanomole. But then the signal just keeps going the more ampicillin I add. So I do think this is because uh, the proteins are biofouling the surface in a way, maybe just getting into the way um, of the methylene blue tag just to kind of come, come closer to the surface, even if it, it, it has bound the ampicillin that is in milk. So this is still working progress. Um, um, I still need to optimize that further. I'm not sure how, uh, but this this is what is meant to uh, this is what is meant to happen uh, when I have my final system. And uh, the whole idea is just to put the chip in milk and just to, uh, uh, take the measurement in real time uh, without any sample prep. Um, so just to quickly summarize, um, I've come in this presentation. I've compared uh, external redox reporter and an ex uh, internal redox tag, uh, and the method in blue tag does work better than using ferroferrocyanide couple as an external. Um, and uh, the successful method was used on milk. However, it needs a lot of improvement um, for the aim of my uh, PhD project. So the next steps are to improve the sensitivity as well. Um, as I mentioned, the maximum residue limits for uh, ampicillin in milk are roughly uh, 11 um, to 10.8 um, uh, nanomolar. Um, so I do want to improve sensitivity because right now um, the sensor works the best. Um, uh, like the limited detection right now is 100 nanomolar, so that's 10 times more. Uh, and of course, improve the analysis in milk. Um, also, if you remember, um, the chip that I showed you. So we do have eight working electrodes on the chip. So uh, potentially I would like to explore uh, more targets um, since uh, we can multiplex, we can just put different optimer on um, all the different electrodes and have eight targets detected at the same time. Um, and finally to create a benchmark uh, prototype and hopefully be able to incorporate it in field and maybe to limit a little bit uh, an, an antimicrobial resistance spread, at least um, um, in farms, uh, in, in dairy farms. Um, and just finally, to acknowledge um, my supervisors, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Andy Ward and Professor Fiona Henriquez. Um, these are some um, more uh, collaborators and project partners. And uh, thank you for your attention. And <laughs>